Okay, in the second section of chapter six, we're going to continue our talk about vectors. Uh, we're going to look at dot products of vectors. We're going to look at how to uh, find the dot product of two vectors. And then we're going to do a couple of application problems with dot products, uh, where we uh, find the angle between two vectors and learn how to calculate the vector projection of one vector onto another vector. Okay, so first let's look at the dot product of two vectors. We have a vector u, u1, u2, and v is v1, v2. The dot product between vectors u and v, so u dot v, is equal to u1, v1, plus u2, v2. Um, so it's the product of the x's plus the product of the y's. Um, it's important to note that this is not a vector. It's just a number, it's just a real number. Um, so the, the dot product of two vectors, again, is, is not a vector. Just a, it's just simply a number. Um, now, some properties of dot products, just a couple of properties, maybe they'll show up in the course of our work, maybe they won't so much, but um, u dot v, same as v dot u, uh, u. Um, so the order in which you find the dot product doesn't matter. It's always just the x's times each other and the y's times each other and the sum of that. Um, also, any vector dot product with itself is equal to the magnitude of that vector squared. So just a couple of kind of special properties dealing with dot products. Now let's do a couple examples of actually finding the dot product between two vectors. First example slide, find the dot product between the two vectors. So I gave you an example in component form and then a vector, or an example in linear combinations form. If I want to find dot product, u dot v, I simply take the x's, multiply, plus I take the y's multiplied. So I get 10 plus negative 56, dot product is negative 46. Uh, again, it's just to reiterate one more time, the dot product is not a vector. Um, the dot product computation is just a number. Uh, over here, second example, u dot v. So again, it's x times x, and here in this linear combinations form, remember that the i is the x and the j is the y, so it would be uh, essentially the i times i, so it would be 7 and negative 2 plus, and then the j's, well, vector u has a j value of 0, um, so 0 times 5. So this becomes negative 14 plus 0, or negative 14. An application of dot products uh, allows us to find the angle between two vectors. So if we have um, if we have two non-zero vectors, so let's say vector u and vector v, and we want to find this angle theta that is between these two vectors. Uh, we have a formula that will do that for us. It involves dot product. Um, the formula is this. It is the cosine of the angle equals u dot v divided by magnitude of u times magnitude of v. Or the angle theta is cosine inverse of u dot v magnitude of u magnitude of v like that. This one just more direct theta equals. Alright, how about a couple of example problems how to find the angle between two vectors um, using the formula from the last slide. First one and if you want to see a picture of it, you can certainly draw a picture of it, although a picture is not required. Sometimes it is, uh, however, helpful. We have a vector at negative 4, 3, negative 4, negative 3, sorry, and then one at negative 1, 5. So, uh, 
We've got negative 4, negative 3, which kind of looks like that. We've got negative 1, 5, which looks like that. We're trying to find that angle between the two vectors. Looks kind of like 90, maybe a little bit bigger than 90. Okay, so let's see. Our formula is cosine inverse um, u dot v over magnitude of u times magnitude oops, of v. So u dot v, the dot product on the numerator. Dot product, I want x times x. The x is multiplied to 4 plus y times y. Those are negative 15 over. I need the magnitudes in the denominator. So the magnitude, uh, well, this one's easy to look at because it'd be negative 4 squared plus negative 3 squared. It's essentially a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So 5 times... Uh, this one here, finding its magnitude, I would want negative 1 squared plus 5 squared. It's the square root of 26. So cosine inverse negative 11 over 5 squared of 26. Okay, it doesn't have to be simplified because we're just going to throw it into the calculator. Cosine inverse negative 11 divided by 5 square root 26 comes out to be 115.6 degrees okay. second example uh, again same type of problem So the formula, again, I want cosine inverse. In the numerator, I want the dot product. So that is x times x plus y times y over. Uh, now I want the magnitude of each vector. So this one would be 9 plus 9. So this one is the square root of 18. This one would be 4. Now over here, you're going to, when you square these, uh, squaring the negative 2 is easy, that's 4. Squaring this, you're going to square the 2, and when you square the square root, it just drops off the square root. So it becomes 4 plus, and this one is 4 times 3, which is 12. So 4 plus 12, 16. So we have cosine inverse. I actually can't combine those at all. Negative 6 plus negative 6 square root of 3. I can simplify the square root of 16 to 4. I know I can simplify the square root of 18, but the calculator isn't really going to care if we simplify that or not. So let's go ahead and, and type this in as it is. Cosine inverse, the numerator is negative 6 minus 6 square root 3. Notice I put that in its own set of parentheses. Divided by 4 square root 18. And so we have an angle of 165 degrees. All right, talking about the angle between two vectors, um, again, let me kind of write out the formula. Cosine theta equals u dot v divided by magnitude of u times magnitude of v. Um, leads us to this definition here, um, orthogonal vectors. Um, two vectors, u and v, are orthogonal if their dot product, u dot v, equals zero. Um, Dot product, it um, basically means that the vectors are perpendicular. Um, it, for the most part, that's kind of what it means. Um, there, is a, there is a subtle part to that that uh, in some instances, orthogonal and perpendicular aren't the same, but for, for, for most cases it is, so we're not going to worry about the, 
uh, the case where it's not. Um, but the reason why this here works, if I were to rewrite this equation down here, take all this over here, we'd have that u dot v is equal to magnitude of u times magnitude of v times cosine of theta. Well, if theta equals 90 degrees, then cosine of theta equals zero. Yeah, so if the angle between them was 90, then that whole thing becomes zero and it becomes u dot v equals zero because of course zero times these is going to be zero. It's not going to matter what the length, um, what the magnitude of those vectors is. If the angle is 90 degrees, then that whole thing goes to zero. Um, so by kind of reverse thinking, um, if the dot product of the two vectors is zero, well that means that cosine of an angle was zero, which means the angle was 90. And so they're therefore perpendicular or can be said to be orthogonal. The example says, prove the vectors are orthogonal. So uh, they are orthogonal, just show that they are basically. Prove means kind of show. Um, so they're orthogonal if u dot v equals zero. Well, so I'm gonna find the dot product to show that it's zero. So u dot v, it's x times x plus y times y. Well, this becomes 3, this one becomes negative 3, which is 0. So by showing that u dot v is 0, I have proved that these two vectors are in fact orthogonal.